In this example, we're going to look at creating the simple crest model that you can see here. Using the clip art that comes with the software, we're going to import them into our session, we'll lay them out, and once we're happy with that layout, we'll then look at the heights to ensure that all of the overlapping components are either in front, behind, or blending into one another. We'll then look at some finishing techniques. So let's just close this down, and then we'll go and create a new file. And so in the job setup form, we're going to give that a width of 10 inches, height of 10 inches, we'll set C0 off the top of the block, material thickness that we're working with is half an inch. We're going to set the XY datum position to be in the centre of the part. Modeling resolution, we're just going to bring that up to very high, and then we'll just go ahead and press OK. So let's go into the 2D view control, and we're going to go and tile our windows vertically. So we're going to start this off by browsing through the clip art that comes with the software to help us to choose what we'd like to put into our design. Now usually you would have some form of idea of what it is that you'd like to create, whether that's going by a visual reference, for example a sketch or a photograph, or you may just have a vague idea of what it is that you want to create, where you can create it on the spot. I know that I want to create a crest and I've looked at images of crests on the internet in books and so I have a fairly good idea of the common elements that you generally find on a crest so I'm looking for things such as crowns, fleur de lis, banners and uh, ribbons etc. So to start let's just go into the modelling tab. So the first piece of clip art we're going to look for will be the shield and we're going to build everything up on top of the shield. So to keep my job organised from stage 1, I'm going to go and rename this level, I'm going to right mouse click, rename level, and I'm going to call this level shield. And any components that I bring in or clip art that I import will sit within this level. So let's go into the clip art tab. And you can see that I've installed the clip art that comes with the software and I've added all of those subfolders within the library browser there. So I'm going to go to this folder called Panels and Shields. You can see in here that we can easily see all the clip art that we have available. So I'm just going to work my way through until I like the look of something. So I like this one here, Shield 5 number 3. And so what I can do is just double click that and I'll automatically put that in the centre of my job for me. So let's just go and alter the size. So we're just going to dynamically change that just using the transform handle. So I'm just going to hold over the corner handle here and then holding down shift on the keyboard that will enable me to scale that up in proportion. Okay, so I'm happy with uh, that shape that we've got there. And so if we just go into the modeling tab, we can see that that shield has been added to our component tree. Now, as I said earlier, what I'd like to do is add pieces of clip art on top of my shield. So to help me, I'm going to go ahead and insert a new level. So I'm going to hover over the shield level, right mouse click, use the option to insert a new level. And then I'm going to right mouse click again, I'm going to rename that level. I'm going to call this level Details. You can see it's set to add, so anything that I add into this level is ultimately going to sit on top of that shield level because it's we can see the combine mode there is adding on top of the shield. So let's go into the clip art tab. And then for this we're going to go and search through the decorative folder. I can see straight away that I have a crown here, so I'm just going to double click that, put that in my job. Again we can make that smaller by holding down shift and pulling on the corner uh, handle that we've got there. I can also do this in the 3D view if I wanted to, so I can make that smaller. If I wanted to I could just move that up a little bit until I'm happy with the position that it is in my uh, 3D view. Yeah, just bring that down a little. Okay, so I'm happy with that, so let's have a look for some other things that we could add on top of the shield there. Okay, so I like this, these three feathers. Let's just double click that. Again, let's go ahead and just scale those down. And then we could position them on top of the crown. Okay, so this sort of project is just all about just 
playing with the design until you're happy. Okay, so I'm just going to put that in there. You must know at this stage I am just working with the layout. I'm not concerned about the heights at this stage. We'll come to the heights once we're happy with the exact layout of our project. So let's go back and have a look through the clip art and see what else we can find. Okay, so we can see a fleur de lis there. Again, let's just double click that. I could also just drag them in if I wanted to. Uh, so I'm just going to right mouse click and just delete that. Then we'll take that one, select that again to put it into transform mode. Again, I'm going to hold down shift just to scale that down in proportion. And then just holding down shift, I'm just going to bring that down. That's just going to keep that a line. Let's bring that down. Might want to make that a little bit smaller again. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. And what it could be worth doing is I could create a copy to sit on either side of the fleur de lis. Now rather than pull out another fleur de lis from the clip art tab, what I could do is just hold onto this one here whilst it's in transform mode, hold down control, hold down shift, and then just drag that across and so holding down shift keeps that in line and holding the control just gives us another copy. And so you can see we've got another piece of clip art here. So let's just make that smaller. So just hold down shift on the corner handle. That's just going to shrink that down. Might make that a little bit smaller. Then bring that over. Make that a little bit smaller again. And then bring that over so it's sat flat on the shield. If I just zoom in there, we can see now that's on the shield there. Let's put that back in Z. I might just want to nut it over one more time. There we go. So I would like another one here, but I'm not going to create a copy just yet. I'd like to alter the heights of everything first. It's just to save me time so I can just alter the height of one and then I'll look at mirroring that as part of one of the finishing stages towards the end. Okay, so looking at that, it's not too bad. I like the look of that, what we've got so far. But now I'd like to include an area that I would apply text to at some point. And crests like these usually have a banner or ribbon of some sort. So I'm going to go and look at adding a banner to go to the bottom area of my shield. So let's just put that back in Z. And again, let's go into the modeling tab. And to help me out, I'm just going to go and insert a new level. So I'm going to right mouse click on the details level, and insert a new level, right mouse click. We're going to rename that level. We're going to call this level the banner level. As we'd like this to blend in with our shield. We want the banner to come in at the bottom, but we want it to blend in. We don't want that to add. So what I must do here is change the combine mode of this level. So I'm going to right mouse click, change the combine mode and set that to merge. So anything that I create in here is ultimately going to blend in with the composite model that we can see here and the levels that are below that banner. So with that banner level in bold, I'm going to go down into the clip art tab and you can see that we have a ribbons and banners section. Okay, so we've got three banners or ribbons to choose from. And I think I'm going to go and select this one here. So I'm just going to double click that and then we can see that that has a green shadow. And that's because we've got that on a level set to merge and so at this size it's actually uh, it's smaller in height than the shield that we've got here, so it's hidden underneath there. If I make this bigger, we should be able to see that coming through. I'm just going to make that bigger just by holding down Shift just to scale that up. And we can see that it's starting to come through. Let's just bring that down to the bottom of my shield. Somewhere around here will do. That's a bit too low, so let's just bring that up a little. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So again, I'm not worried about the heights at this stage. We'll come to uh, adjusting the heights once we've got that layout. So at this stage, I'm fairly happy with what we've got. However, I feel we could add in some additional clip art, maybe look at some flourishes. 
So let's go back into the decorative folder and see if we have anything that uh, resembles a flourish. Here we can see we've got this one here, flourish repeat two. So let's just double click that just to see how that looks. You can see the grey scale has been put into the centre there and we can also see we've got that green shadow in the 3D view and again it's because at this size the height doesn't come higher than the shield therefore it's hidden away because it's on that level that's set to merge. And So if I just bring that out over here we should start to see that there. So I'm just going to shrink this down so again holding down shift just to bring that down and we're going to go and position that over here, okay, so that's not too bad and that's okay and then what I'd like to do is look at creating a mirrored copy on the right hand side but again I'm not going to do that until I've altered the heights of all the components as it's easier to just edit one than it is to edit two. So let's go into the modeling tab so now that I have my layout and I'm happy with the way all of our components are interacting with each other where we organize our component tree I just want to take a moment to just review that component tree so just going to undraw the banner level undraw the details level and we'll just start where we started off so we started off with our base shape which was our shield so we've got our shield level that's set to add so it's just adding to the model in plane so there's nothing else for it to add to and then on top of that we decided that we wanted to put components on top of the shield so we created a new level which is the details level and so anything that we create within this level or add to this level will ultimately be added on top of that shield level and so we can see that all of the components within this level are all set to merge so they're all blending with each other within this level however they are all ultimately adding on top of that shield level we then wanted to create a banner that's going to blend in at the bottom here so we created a banner level and we set that level to merge so that, that blends in and any components that we add into that level will ultimately merge with the rest of the component tree. So at this stage what I may want to do is just rename this level. So we're going to right mouse click, rename the banner level, we're going to call that banner and flourish. And so now we're at the stage where we can go on and think about the heights of all the components to ensure that the overlapping components are either in front, behind or blending into one another. So we're going to start by looking at the shield. So ultimately we want the ribbon to sit in front of the shield, we want the flourish to come into and behind the shield. So we want the shield prominent of the flourish but we don't want it prominent of the banner. We want the banner to be the most prominent component within this whole setup. So let's have a look at that. So we could come over to the properties, so we could use the properties icon up here and then we could look, it's telling us the current shape height, so let's just reduce that down to 0.3 and then we'll press the space bar to enter that in. So you can see that has been reduced a little bit but not enough. We can still see that that banner is not coming over and being proud of that shield. So rather than me reduce the overall height even more of that shield, what I could do is look at applying a fade. And so what that will do, it will allow us to pick an area of the component that we want to reduce down. So if we use the fade option here, if we tick that we can see now that we are able to set an anchor point. So if we select the set button here, you can see that we've got this uh, icon, this uh, cursor is now a crosshair and I'm just going to click at the top. So the first anchor point is where you want to keep the height the same. You can see now it's pulled out this uh, pink dotted line and so wherever I click next is going to be the direction of my fade. Now I just want to fade from the top down to the bottom so I'm just going to click underneath the shield and we can see now that's done a fade automatically of 50%. We can see that that 50% is enough for our banner to now be prominent of that shield. So I'm happy with that and then we'll look at reducing the height of the flourish so that, that sits underneath the shield uh, shortly when we get to the flourish component. 
So whilst in the components properties form, I could go ahead and just select my next component and that will update uh, according to whichever component I've got selected. Okay, so the crown, all I'm going to do here is I don't need to do a lot, I'm just going to look at just rounding that up. So I'll make the shape height of that to be 0.2, press space to enter that in. So what I'd like to do now is I'd just like to maximise my 3D view just so I can see uh, everything a little bit clearer. And then we're going to move on to these feathers here. Now I'd like to look at fading this down. So I could use a fade option, however these options here only allow me to use uh, the fade and the tilt whilst in the 2D view. So I'm just going to close this form down and then in the 3D view I'm going to click to put that into transform mode, so that's a double click on a component and then I'm going to select this blue properties node at the bottom here and that will bring up the a short properties form here. And so what I can do here is just look at using fade and tilt whilst in a full 3D view. So I'm happy with the overall height of this component, however what I would like to do is look at fading this down as the area at the bottom here of the feather is poking through the crown and I don't want that to come through, I want it to sit behind the crown that we've got. So I'm going to use the fade option just like we did for the shield. We can now set an anchor, so I'm going to use the set anchor point and we can see that we have an anchor cursor with the number 1 next to it. So that's where we set our first anchor point. So again I'm fading from the top down to the bottom. So I'm just going to click anywhere above the feathers and I'm just going to click at the bottom and you can see that my anchor has a number 2 next to it so that's telling me we need to set our second anchor point so I'm just going to click the bottom here again it will do that at default of 50% I think that's just enough to go under let's see if we can get away with less let's try 30 and just use the slider here or I could just type in specific values and you can see that at 13 it's just coming through there so I'll probably be best using uh, 20% fade. We can see now that's completely hidden behind that crown now. So let's have a look at the fleur de lis. So I'm just going to click on that and we can see that that's been updated there. What I would like to do with this is just bring the top area up so that's prominent of the crown but I want the bottom area to be hidden behind the banner. So let's just look at increasing the height of that. So I'll bring that up to 0.1 Okay, and then what we're going to do now is apply a tilt. So similar way that the fade works, we need to set an anchor point of where we'd like to keep the side of the component the same. And then we're going to specify a second anchor point, and that's the side that we want to change. In this case, we're going to lift it up. So we're going to use the tilt option here. So we're going to set our anchor. So we need to specify our first anchor point. That's going to be at the bottom here. You can see now we have a number two. So I'm going to click at the top there. So we're going to tilt from the bottom here. It's going to lift the top area of our component up. And what we need to do here is just specify a degrees. So let's have a look. See that's still not completely covering the crown. You can see there's green areas there so wherever you see green that's the software's way of telling you there's areas of that component that's been obscured by another component. Let's just type in a value so I'll put in 1.5 okay, I think I might need to do a little bit more so let's try 1.8 you can see now that is completely prominent of that crown. We can also see that uh, the bottom of the fleur de lis is still hidden away from the banner so that's good. We can then move on to this small fleur de lis here, so I'm just going to click on that. That's not too bad, I could just look at increasing the height a little bit just to bring out a little bit more detail in there, so I'll just do a small amount, 0 0.075, you can see that's just emphasised that a little bit more. Let's move on to the banner, okay, so you can see it's not too bad as it is, I just may want to put in a little bit more height, so I might just round that up to 0.3, press space to enter that in, and I'm happy with that. Put that back in Z, then we'll go on to the flourish here, select that, let's have a look at just reducing the height of that down, I want this to be hidden underneath our shield that we've got, so I'll go ahead and say 0.2, press space to enter that in, Again, it's not 
completely hidden away there so let's try 0.15 and press space to enter that in again it's still not hidden from that shield there so what I might want to do is apply a fade as I don't want to reduce the height of that component anymore as I feel that would lose the detail that we've got within this flourish so we're going to look at applying a fade, we're going to go from the left to the right hand side, so let's use the fade option here, we'll go and set that, set our first anchor point on the left, second anchor point on the right hand side, so that's at 50%, let's try a little bit more, okay we'll try just the full 100% there. Okay, so it's not too bad, it's hidden away, however it's very close, so I may need to look at alter in the shield again. So let's just put that back in Z. And so going back and forth altering uh, the component's heights, whether it's tilts or fades, is generally the process when assembling clip art, where you have to go through each part individually, altering the heights, adding tilts and fades, until you get a complete model that looks correct, where one component is either in front, behind, or blending into its neighbouring component. So let's go back to that shield, so we're going to select that there, and say so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at seeing if I can apply a base height just to bring that more prominent of that flourish there. So let's just go in, put in a small base height of say 0 0.05 and press space to enter that in. So we can see there that that is now completely covering that flourish. So I'm happy with that. However, because we've put that base height on, we can see now that our fleur de lis here is seeping into that banner. So I need to look at altering this component. So I'm just going to look at applying a fade. So with that selected, let's go into the fade option. I'm going to use the set option here. I'm going to go from the top and click on the bottom. And it'll do that automatically at 50%. You can see that we haven't interfered with um, the way that that component is prominent of the crown and so I'm happy with that. So let's close this down. And so now I'm happy with the overall heights of all of those components. We've got them either in front, behind or blending correctly with their neighbouring components. We can start to think about some of the finishing techniques. Now one of those is to create mirrored copies of components that you've edited. So I'm going to take that small fleur de lis, I'm going to hold down shift and select that flourish. I'm going to come over into the drawing tab, into transform objects, and we're going to use this option here to mirror selected objects. So we're going to flip that about job center, we're going to create a mirrored copy, and we're going to go ahead and flip horizontal. And we can see that that's created a copy of those components. Let's just close that down, take a look at that. So you can see now we're pretty much at finish stage. The last thing that I'd like to do is just look at softening my banner. So I'm going to just uh, pan my view across there and I'm just going to take that banner and then we're going to go into the modeling tab. We're going to use this option here to apply a smoothing filter and then we're just going to soften that component. This is a subjective thing, I just like to have uh, softer looking components. You can see that's done that at default of 50%. I'm just going to reduce that just a little bit, just so it has softened just a little. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's just OK that, put that in an isometric view. So now that I have a part that I'm happy with, and if I wanted to, I could go and prepare that for machining and then calculate the toolpaths. And so that completes this tutorial where we've seen how we can create a simple shield using the clip art that is available with the software and using a simple step-by-step -step approach where we chose our clip art and using the transformation tools we looked at laying those out. And once we were happy with that layout we then moved on and looked at adjusting the heights of those components until the overlapping areas were either in front, behind or blending into one another. To finish that off, we created mirrored copies of edited components and then we looked at how we could apply a smoothing filter. So now would be a good idea to go ahead and save this file. So let's go to File, Save As, and then the Simple Crest Project folder, we're going to call that Simple Crest Model. Then we'll press save and you can access this file along with the clip art that we used in this example in the project folder.